situation. Finally, finally got a chance to escape the cold and go inside. Well, I've, I've been out several times. Um, I haven't been to Rehoboth, but I've been out, you know. Maybe not outside, but we just don't eat inside. I haven't until now. Hello, Bonnie. You know, I've been, uh, I've been to Harbor a few times and they're plenty, they've, they've got that worked out very well, so. Um, but yeah, I was over there the other night for dinner and uh, Paul Ewald's and, De and Deborah were eating outside on the deck. That's what we've done. Like, we, we, like went, we took my yeah. son out in Newark. And Deborah, <laughs> Deborah, like, Deborah had a dress on. I'm like, are you sure that you, you know. Did she have a coat on? Um, yeah, she had a jacket, but she, okay. she wasn't. Uh, I'm like, I think I would have been um, a little more heavily dressed. I don't know. Yeah, I, I know that when we took our son out in Newark, the, the restaurant staff kind of laughed at us. <laughs> they are like, it's really cold out. I'm like, yeah, we'll be okay. And, and it was cold. It was cold, but we stayed outside anyway. I talked to Greg at the Yacht Club, but apparently they're still doing okay. So. I don't know, Ted. In On very cold days, I've seen you out in just your sort of Tattersall shirt and that uh, sort of tan colored yeah. vest. Yeah. Well, I think you're pretty hardy. Well, I, you know, I, I'd rather be on the cool side than on the overheated side. That's for Not sure. Me. I'd rather sweat a little than be cold. Yeah, one of the things we can't figure out about this house is I'm, I'm sitting in the kitchen and it's a sunny day. Um, we do not have the heat on in this house. It's probably 30 outside. Mm -hmm. In here, it's 72. Good for you. Yeah, but the heat's not on. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm- Well, insulated I'm, body, just be faithful. <laughs> well, it's, re it's well insulated. And someone said to me, well, that's what happens when you are on top of granite. Mm. You know, so, I mean, I know the basement's really well insulated. So go figure. Does that mean mausoleums are especially warm? <laughs> I, you know, New Hampshire's best. I don't know. You don't call it the granite state for nothing. Let's hope that we don't, none of us have a, that experience anytime soon, so. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, I, think I, have, I think I have the opposite problem from Tim because I know he's- he, he's, he's room darkening at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bring, well, we're supposed to have three to five inches of snow tomorrow, so. Oh, we're, supposed wow. to have, we're supposed to have more rain. It just seems like it's been such a wet winter. Gray and wet. Yeah. And this one is, they were saying on um, RDE this morning that we haven't had three consecutive days without rain in, until this week, since since January 1st. Wow. wow. Yeah, but see, see Tim's got a, Tim's got a, 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 a scarf on. <laughs> and, and a couple and other layers. It has a heat pump. But you also have a, <laughs> but it's only a exactly. two dog, is it only a one dog lap? I don't know. Yeah, today it is, so okay. far. <laughs> I mean, you know, there used to be the uh, three dog night, so now we have the one dog lap, I guess. Exactly, Ted, uh, exactly. Just, just so you and see. it looks like he's dressed to be warm today, so. Yeah. There's, there's our backyard. It's, it's got plenty of snow in it. Um, well, where's the snowman? I don't see a snow person. Uh, it's very dry snow. Okay. So it'd be, it'd be tough to make a, 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 a credible snowman out of, or snow and person. you do cross country skiing, Bonnie? No, I do have uh, I do have um, micro cleats, which I should have had on the screen because I took a uh, I took I, I did fall on the ice, but um, you know it wasn't bad. Okay. So I have I have micro cleats. It looks I mean it looks those things really look like you've got some kind of S and M thing going on in your house. I don't know if you've ever seen them <laughs> there. They're really weird. We'll leave that alone. Thank Nobody, you. Nobody, you're on a public <laughs> meeting. <laughs> it is a public meeting, you know. <laughs> so, so we've got two, we've got two sets of them. So there's four, right? One for each. Okay. 
on, on two people and it, it, it looks really odd. I mean, I'm going to find a drawer for them somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the levity. <laughs> so, and it uh, looks, like, looks like Andrew's pushing Stanford today. <laughs> so. All right, so it is Friday, uh, February the 26th, and it's now 104, and we are here for the fourth of a series of budget workshops. And um, the first item on the agenda is to review the prior change, the changes to the prior draft budget. And uh, we do not have a new draft budget, but I think Ellen Lorraine has a few updates uh, in terms of revenue that she'd like to provide for us, correct? You're um, muted, Ellen Lorraine. <laughs> doesn't say that I am. Okay, well now you're okay, but uh, when you first spoke, we couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry about that. So no yes, I thank you. Update you on our most recent figures for some uh, revenue sources that uh, the due date was February 1st, and that was for gross receipt rental tax. And as of today, we've collected 531,000. Um, in the draft free budget, we have put in 500,000. So I think it's comfortable to up that budget to 530,000 for um, the 22 fiscal year. Given, for, the, where we, given where we are, we might be able to go to 550. If you've already 531 and we know we've had more increased rentals. It's just we, something to think about. Are we ahead. sure that, uh, I'm just wondering how, how unique was this year? I don't know. A, a lot of a lot of people came down and 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 used their own houses rather than rent rented them out, so it may have reduced it to that extent. Right. But a lot of people rented houses that might otherwise not have. Been that's why, yeah, that's why I'm saying we're already collected five thirty one. Maybe five thirty is a good number. Maybe five fifty is a good number. Either way, it's close. Well, if yeah. we keep going at the same rate, we got one more month. Uh, two more months to go. Mm -hmm. One more. One more. We won't grow at the same rate because it was all due February 1st. So I imagine a lot of it has come in now. Yeah. And, she, and she's giving us as of today. So we're at the 26th of the month. So I don't think you're going to see a lot more revenue come in. Right. I don't anticipate that. I'd be comfortable. I'd be a little bit more comfortable being a little bit more conservative. Okay. And okay, 530, that, that's fine. Well, 500 maybe. I think. Um, we, well, we have it at 500. Um, and I think we're. Oh, Rain and I are confident that that we can bring it to 5:30. There are a number of dynamics, as you mentioned. For instance, people that stayed longer that may not next year. So that that could, could cut against us. But we also had March, April, and May where people weren't able to rent their properties. That's right. So that's three months where you know the the shoulder season has, has right. become increasingly busy and you know, things like Easter and all. Um, so I think that 530 is still conservative enough that that it's not overly generous. Okay, uh, that's persuasive. Mm -hmm. And um, well, remember that, it, in, in, I mean, it, here's an interesting uh, statistic if you look at it, uh, we collected 558 in 20. Yes, I was gonna mention that, yeah. Thank you, Elmer. Now, is it, is it, how do we calculate it, Ellen Lorraine? Is it retrospective based on how much they collected the previous calendar year? Yes, we, you mean how we budget for it? No, I mean how they, how we actually charge it. Yes, it's based off the calendar year, how much revenue the previous was. Previous calendar year. Thanks. Yes. So, Ellen Lorraine, to, fit, to maybe you were to say this, if you look at 19, we collected 545. In 20, we collected 558. And this year we're at 531. Um, so we're actually down compared to previous years at this point. Mm -hmm. So I think we can anticipate that the revenue, based, assuming we get back to whatever normal is going to be, that the, these numbers will rise. I, I like Rob's idea. I think just keeping it the same, the 530 to me seems reasonable because we've gotten there in past years and we're going to, we're there this year. So yeah. at least seems ach achievable. I think yeah. Okay, that's fine. So the next revenue line I want to mention is the business licenses. So we have collected as of today almost two hundred fifty-five thousand, budgeted two hundred fifty thousand, and so I think that we could up that budget to two hundred fifty-five thousand. 
And oh, um, Lorraine, what line is that, please, or page? Page three. Page, page 100. three. Thank you. And no, Lorraine, what is the, um, the trajectory of those collections? It, it's not bumpy like, like, like uh, gross rental receipts tax. No, we typically do not receive a lot of contractor renewal licenses until the, the jobs pick up. So in the spring and, and most contractors do not renew until they have a job in the city. So we could see a little bit more revenue um, from that line, but I think being conservative 255 may be a realistic budget. Now, again, looking on the, I'm looking at the glass half empty, um, I wonder to what extent this past year had a, an unusual amount of home renovations because mm -hmm. of people moving back in. I, I understand the contractors were all backed up. So I'm wondering how aggressive we ought to be for next year. Well, in 20, we collected 275,000. Um, in 19, we collected 259,000, almost 260,000. And so you're suggesting we put the budget up to 255? Yeah. And then the third line would be building permits. Um, we, as of today, have collected 354,000. We budgeted 380,000. I don't recommend changing that budget, budget at this time, uh, but leaving it as is. And the um, building permits, that's got to be bumpy. I mean, when, yes. when uh, Lewis Waterfront Preserve kicks off, there's going to be a flood of it. Do we reserve that in any way? Or is that is that an aspect of windfall revenues that we just put into operating funds? I think we talked about setting any excess above budget aside. Is that correct, Anne Marie? Yes. My, my recommendation last year and, and again this year is that we set it based on what would be kind of our consistent level, even though we know we may get more than that. And then when we exceed that, we move it to the general capital projects account because that is the, the capital projects account that does not have a funding stream. And that that helps to feed that and not become too reliant on the, the building permit revenues, which can fluctuate. Okay, and sorry for this, Stupid question. Uh, I'm sure I've asked it every year. The the reserves we've got are operating reserve, which we target to be as much as six months, but we don't want it to be a lot more than that. It's and, and then the capital projects fund is not really a reserve fund. It's but it it acts as a reserve for capital projects. We can tap it to pay for streets and so forth. And then, yes. and then what other reserve funds do we have? So we have the general capital projects fund, which has a reserve in it, and then we have the transfer tax fund. Now the general capital projects fund, that's the one I, I said was targeted at six months worth of operating expenses? No, that would be the general fund, which no. we tried to target at six months. And actually it's more than that now, is it not? That's well, currently we have, or as of the end of January, there was 5.2 million with 3.2 to 9 million sitting in investments. Okay, so we're at 5.2 million and, and what's, the, what's the monthly, what's the six month operational expenses? About three and a half, I would think. I would think it's about three and a half. So we have plenty. We, our reserve is quite large. Right. Yeah, but remember that if you're looking at the total amount in investments, that's divided into a bunch of accounts. My, my recollection, and Eleanor, and I may be completely wrong, but my recollection is we've put 2.4 million in investments from for operating reserves. Is that about right? Yes, we did an initial 2.2 million, and then we did an additional 800 for the right. 3 million. And as of the end of January, it was 3.229. Okay. And so what is the rest in? Sorry, Bunny. The rest of the general fund cash, yeah, right? It's checking account and savings account balances. Okay, and now the general capital projects fund, you say that's not that doesn't have a revenue source. 
It has a very low minimum revenue source. Um, it doesn't usually cover the expenditures in that fund. Is that from sidewalks? The revenue does come from sidewalk reimbursements when the city does a street rehab project. Uh, the other revenue comes from the city creating a reserve for trash truck purchases. So we budget for that in the operating fund. And then we do physically do a transfer of money to the general capital. And why don't we, um, and then we have this separate transfer tax reserve. Yes. And I think uh, you're still separating half percent from 1% or not? Oh, no, not that. anymore. We stopped that, I think, in right. 19. So why, why, don't, why do we have a, a general capital projects fund to pay for streets, et cetera, that's got no revenue and a windfall tax uh, fund that does get revenue? Would it make uh, sense to combine them? The state has requirements on the expenditure of transfer tax monies. Right. So we segregate them from the other uh, capital projects. Board. But, and that's just so we can track it better? Yes. But as a practical matter, the amounts we spend on permitted expenditures dwarf the um, city's obligation under state law. So right. I don't think we've ever been in any, anywhere close to running afoul of the state law. I don't believe so either. Because of public safety and, and um, debt repayment. So. Yeah. Okay, but I understand the logic. Thank you. Yeah, sure. my, my recollection is, and somebody tell me if I'm wrong about this, is that the, the whole windfall account, uh, we, we basically sort of said, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna dedicate that to capital projects was my recollection. So when we, and the windfall account was, was, was your initiative, uh, Rob, as I recall. So yeah, so that is, it, it's, not, it's not a dedicated funding stream because it's, it's, it's transfer taxes and therefore it's not predictable. Right. Uh, but it is one other pocket of funds that does, when we have it, does go to capital projects. Right. Um, we consolidate all to the uh, the windfall UBS investments into the regular UBS investments. Right. Right. That is my recollection. And when in the budget cycle are we going to be addressing capital projects, or is that going to be a separate set of discussions um, from the budget? That's next week. It's next week. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, then I'll. I'll save my other stupid questions for later. Thank you. Ellen, you have anything else? Well, I just would like to summarize that if we were to increase the URT budget to 530 and increase the business licenses to 255, that increases our revenue by 35,000 and it could possibly reduce the prior year reserve need from the current 430,970 down to 395,970. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the first number was 439. 439,970? Okay, thank you. 439, I, I heard 430,970. Is it 439,970? 430,970. Okay, thank you. I, I misheard. When you do the, when you deduct the thirty five from that, that's where you get the three ninety five. I didn't wasn't fast enough with my roof. No problem. All right. So if if that's everything you have, Ellen, okay, then we're good. So we're going to reverse it. We're going to change this agenda a little bit because Trina, uh, representing the African American uh, Heritage Group, has a. Need, has a need to go first today because of prior commitments. So, Trina, if we could bring you up to talk with us, that'd be great. Right. I'm going to bring up Trina and and uh, Devin McCafferty. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, what page is that? Please? Page sixteen. Yep, got it. 
Hey, hello, Reverend McCafferty. How are you? I'm well, thank God. How are you? Good. Good. Are you here or are you someplace else today? I am here. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Trina, how are you? I am here. I had to hit the button. I was wondering why I couldn't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see you. Too. <laughs> I can adjust now. <laughs> okay, great. So the floor is yours. You want to talk to us about your budget request? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask questions, but okay, sure. Um, we have uh, our, just our first budget, of course, and um, a couple of things that we uh, wanted to consider adding to the budget is uh, some um, historical plaques, uh, possibly uh, two dedications for uh, for the year, and um, also uh, Juneteenth celebration, because we know that the city, I think, um, celebrated Juneteenth officially last year. And so we want, we would love to make that um, an event, uh, I guess, all depending on the COVID situation. But um, we thought that maybe we would add it to the, add it to the budget and if we need to make a modification, then we, we will, um, depending on how things are going with the state. So um, we're, we're adding that and we would love to have uh, uh, pending weather, of course, something like that right here in Lewis on, on Second Street. And so um, what we did was we priced out a couple of things, um, uh, maybe, um, catering for 150 people or it, if it's public, you know, it's probably going to be more people, but um, food wise, maybe uh, at least 150 people, um, some advertising in the budget, uh, some giveaways in the budget. And if we had to have something in house, we also priced that out as well, um, called a couple of areas. Uh, around um, it, here in Lewis, of course, was pr pretty outrageous for, for us, you know, to, to try to have something in, in house. Um, but um, I did also price an, a, 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 a black owned restaurant in Milton. And we also priced out the um, cheer center. So um, th those are some of the things that uh, we are uh, looking at. And we also are looking at um, having some entertainment if we uh, do that, um, a DJ maybe, uh, or even a band. And um, I was able to price, uh, get some uh, prices for that. And um, <clears throat> the other thing that we were looking at were um, trying to get some um, access to um, Ancestry.com or in newspaper.com, which is a membership fee. Um, we're, we would love to have a banner for advertising for our events. And we would love to honor uh, some uh, past and present locals um, and having an event attached to that. And we also looked at what it would cost to, um, if we had to have some transcribing of some of the oral histories um if we if we had to go back and, and look at some that are already recorded then transcribing services may be necessary although if we as our volunteers were doing um oral histories then uh there would be a case where we could do some of that ourselves so basically that's pretty oh the one thing i did miss i think was um, we would love to have so, some sort of logo for the commission. So that's where we um, built in a uh, graphic artist uh, into all of this. And that's just kind of an overview. And I don't know if I missed anything. I did miss a speaker stiping for um, our Juneteenth celebration. And I think that's it. Um, if I didn't, did I miss anything, um, Reverend McCafferty? Oh, no, you did not. I'd just like to make it clear that the catering events, uh, they are two separate 
lines for that. One is for Juneteenth and one is for the uh, honoring of the locals. Okay. I just want to make that clear. And, uh, Reverend McCaffrey, uh, the honoring of the locals, would that be at an event that's already scheduled or is that uh, yet to come? It's yet to come. Okay. In terms of your plaques, historical plaques, we know that there's already Ernie and Steve uh, or Lopez, a representative Spick, have already indicated they would fund the the, the bronze plaque. Yes. Uh, these are plaques over and above that, I'm assuming. Is that correct? Well, yes, they, yes that's correct. Okay. And typically cost per, like uh, if you budget for this, how many are you planning that that would get you, for example? Well, we we're we looked at um, they 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 do uh, run a little pricey, so um, they they can start at anywhere for uh, five hundred dollars okay. up. And so I looked at a, a website called erielandmark.com, and they have um, uh, plaques and um, signage, and so it just depends on um, what the commission would be looking at as far as uh, the type. Right, okay. And these would be separate, the, like the, the mayor said, the state's funding the historical marker that is, um, that's done by archives, but this would be diff a different type of marker, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I have a question for the, sorry, go ahead. I just have a question for the council, maybe Anne-Marie. In the, in the past, for events, for example, have, have there been other committees where the city has budgeted for the item, but then as an event, say like Juneteenth happens and the community may want to donate towards that, is, is there, are we in a position then as a city to recoup through that or like how, how might that work if we find ourselves in that situation where the public is willing to help fund this? then we wouldn't incur the full expense. The, the one that I can think of, which is a little different, but the national night out. Right. Um, but we're, at this point, that's pretty consistent in terms of what's donated. So our budget's been adjusted to to address that. But, but yeah, if, if there were um, community donations that came in for, that could offset what is spent out of the city budget. And sure when we do get donations that are specific to a certain thing, Ellen Lorraine will set up an account so that if somebody um, says that they wanna make a, a donation to events for the African-American Heritage Commission, we can establish a bank account for that so that that money is separate and doesn't, you know, okay, good. doesn't end up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. There has been some of that done particularly for uh, some of the uh, garden things uh, that have gone on, landscaping and things that, where people have donated. So there's there's a history for that. Ellen Lorraine, do you have numbers for the things that uh, Trina just listed? Yes, and that's yes. in the budget draft three version. I, I mean, we don't, don't have that though, do we? So on page 16, all you have is just a full lump sum Right, so I, I can send right. the, the detailed list if you all want. It would be a good idea. That way we'd have the breakdown. And the 1,000, is that for um, for, um, for minutes? Jackie, yep. Exactly, Jackie. And again, if we're if we're able to have an event in June, um, and Second Street is, is a possible location, um, would the city help them in terms of uh, police? They they wouldn't that wouldn't come out of their budget then in terms of any assistance that might be needed for, you know, um, blocking off Second Street or anything like that, right? If it's a city event, it it would be absorbed by the city, so with the commission being a, a entity of the city, then the city would absorb that. It's the third party events where we charge the special duty. And um, yeah, I guess the way I, it's a it's good team. question, Andrew, is like, um, you know, if for the public. 
on it. We can't hear you. You're, you you're muted. It, that kind of thing. You're on mute. What was that? You broke up. You're muted. No, I'm, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, now? you're good. You're back. Thanks. Okay. Um, my, I got one of those, your internet is unstable thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. about to die when that like old lightning is supposed to come down but um yeah all i was saying is i, I guess see the the police protection and that sort of thing and working on the street and in the crowd flow it's not unlike police make sure that the public art installation doesn't get vandalized or harmed you know i, I think it's just part of the, the, the governmental umbrella over this kind of thing yeah, you know, depending upon the focus of or how you structure your Juneteenth celebration, it's possible that it could be held at the Rollins Community Center, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Could you have access to the patio and we could make the access to the community room? So that might be another event. Interesting that it could coincide with the, the 17 men uh, exhibit that the Historic Society is running at the museum so all year this year. So that might be a, a venue that, I don't know whether you all considered that at all or not, but it might be an, envy, an a venue that could work. We, we considered other places, uh, but our concern was traffic flow and people, the accessibility for people to uh, walk around and just come in and participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the parking lot, depending on the timing and everything, the parking lot at the library uh, next right, which is right there, uh, might be a good situation. I get the accessibility question. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, tra I mean, when I say traffic flow, I'm thinking foot traffic, people that are just traveling in the area. Sure. Yeah, and they'll probably be more down this end of town. Yep, I agree. Okay. I mean, we've done we hold uh, every year. Well, not last year, but every year we hold the. Um, the Policeman's Night Out in Smith Park. And that's another venue that could be, if you want to do an outdoor event, that could be a, a place as well. Okay, thank you. I mean, there are lots of places we can think about. Thanks. Thank you. That's my birthday. Hey. <laughs> is it? The 19th, yeah, the 19th is my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are there any other questions about their budget, their, their request? Not here. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank well, thank you. you very much for uh, putting together a budget request and, and laying out what, what your plans are. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Yeah, have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great weekend. Have thank weekend. you. Thank you. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the Public Art Committee. Yeah. We don't have anybody. I don't see anybody there. I don't see Cliff. I think he is out of town. <clears throat> I'm not in a position to talk about how he came up with the number, to be, to be honest with you. Okay. Me neither. Did he, what did he submit? The number was a uh, 12 and a half, I think. Oh, 750. Yes. I do have a listing. What I thought. <clears throat> what page budget is this? I'm sorry. It's on page 16. Budget. Thank but, you. But again, it's got very, um, the, the categories are, you know, our typical categories. It's not. Right. Um, the one thing right I, above, it's right above the African American Heritage Group. Yep, I've got yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, at least on the, the version I have, the, the line item underneath the African American Heritage Group also still says total public art. And then the one above it says total public art. So this is enough. I mean, it's obviously yeah, a typo. Tough, but, uh, I'll make that change. Thank you. Didn't, didn't want Cliff being on the hook for, for 30K. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Oh, he could spend it, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind, yeah. Cliff would appreciate the recognition. But I don't think the African American Heritage Group would like their monies assigned to public art commission. Right. Well, we so we don't know anything about their ask is for. I mean, we know what it, it as far as dollars, but we don't know what their program is, what their plans are. So, uh, oh, Lorraine, what, what do you have? Do you want me to, I can allow you to share your screen if you want to bring it up. Well, I don't have it there, but I can look for it. I have to print it out. Oh, I mean, okay. the difference, the Delta, he got uh, 8,750 the two previous years. Previous years and then this one's showing 4K in that line item for miscellaneous, whereas previously it was either a zero or a negative amount. Yeah, I think we need an explanation of miscellaneous. That's uh, yeah, that's a lot of miscellaneous. So right. I, can... I think he put it in miscellaneous. I think we. Yeah. So when I go down it, it'll make it clear because I'm going to read off the list he submitted. Okay. So okay. Seven hundred fifty dollars in clerical. He submitted $150 for banking, which we did not budget for that amount. He did you did say banking? Banking. Banking? B-A-N-K-I-N-G. Okay. But we did not budget. Thank you. fees come out of our regular bank fee line. 1,000 for art consultant. Which they do not have. 1,000 for uh, do they I did 1,000 for what please Ellen Murray Murray web presence I'm sorry I, I got lost a thousand for the art consultant and that would be under professional consulting yes and then the second thousand was what again web presence thank you is that is that that offline yes i thought we had decided to shut that down council never did but there was a discussion about that bonnie and i i think cliff defended it um i can't remember how well he, he just i think he did defend it in terms of trying to promote uh, online discussion amongst people in reference to various art installations that they did right That's how and that, that's fine, but the, the problem is that you, from a FOIA perspective and from just a good government perspective, you know, we've had this kind of conversation before. It doesn't make sense to have individual components of the city of Lewis out there having their own thing. I mean, if we got a FOIA re request for public art committee, how would we respond? I mean, I guess it's not a record of the city of Lewis, but that doesn't sound so good. Is that well, it, but we're funding it. it well, well, if that's, that's the case, then he, there needs to be some functionality on the city site to host these images and receive right. comment. So it, it's right. one of the. It needs to be one or the other. He, he needs to have a that. repository of these. Um, <clears throat> well, that gets yeah. to receive submission and, and such. I mean, we can do that. I mean, we do that with all of the land development applications. People can submit comments. Um, uh, but I think this is a much more interactive thing that he's been looking at. This gets to the social media conversation that the uh, group had in terms of relaunching downtown, in terms of providing better information, Anne Marie, in, term, uh, in, in terms of better information about where parking is located, et cetera, et cetera, that we we're going to jointly work with the chamber on. Well, so we, we're. Janelle's been working on a website, an interactive mapping website okay. that will, you know, when we're closer to parking season, it'll go live. So we'll, we'll have a draft of that to, to look at. I don't know how that, how does that tie into this? Oh, it's just a more interactive kind of thing. I think that, because that's what Cliff is looking for is, is something to be more interactive. So if well, we budget the thousand for, his, for this web presence, it doesn't prevent us from saying it's got to be up tied to our website. Yeah. But it just does pay for the functionality he's looking for, I guess. Or 
the, the city has a Facebook page, right? Yeah. So could he could, could they create a group page off of the city's? So it's not Facebook the Facebook page? page though that they're paying for. They have a separate website. Um, you know, Cliff didn't ask. So Cliff didn't ask the city what our um, functionality was and, and what we would be able to to um, put up there. You know, he, he didn't say, can you do this? And we said no, and he created it. It kind of happened on its own. But my recollection was also that it, um, that his page went up while we were under the total redesign of our website. So at the time he started, we wouldn't have had it, but we were, you know, in that process. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think so he created his budget without consulting with you to find out, is that correct? He, he doesn't consult with you all as he develops this? Um, but not, not really. I mean, when the decision was made by the committee to create their own website, there was no consultation with staff. Um, as it relates to, they put together their budget um, and they give it to us. That, that's the interaction that we okay. have. They, I mean, so that they're not asking us questions, they're telling us, and that's what all the committees do. They, they tell us what their budget needs are or requests. Yeah. Okay. So the, well, we can get some more clarity on that one. Before yeah, I was about to say in the miscellaneous, he doesn't spell out what the, that's made up of. Uh -huh. He does. Oh, he so does. Ellen Lorraine just sent out. Yeah. Um, here, I, I can. <clears throat> yeah, she got it. And I'm sorry. I, 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 this just came in. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say again, I, I do not believe that we should have committees of the city of Lewis having their own websites outside of the city infrastructure. I just think that's, that's bad government. Uh, I see $10,000 for a 2022 art show. Can anybody speak to that? But, well, and then six thousand dollars fundraising from the committee. I see that. That's, that's how he gets his four thousand dollar miscellaneous. And uh, uh, well, that but that the six is six. Have they has six thousand dollars been fundraised? Not that I'm not to my knowledge. Okay, so it's really ten thousand dollars that's being requested in city funding. How do you the possibility? thousand dollars is that right i mean this this goes to what we were just talking about with what do we do you know when there's donations towards something the, the city the city funds it and then if you get if, if those costs are defrayed they go against that budget item but what he's really asking for is ten thousand dollars for the art show with the possibility of some i think you could do it another way that's not the way i think he, he approached the last no. fundraising it was if he didn't if they didn't raise the funds it would exactly happen. that's my recollection too rob is that is that what's going on here i think so so i've got i guess i've got a couple questions this says 2022 art show is it the 2022 or is it what we're having this summer in 20 well i think i think he's talking about the fy 2022 which would be okay. this summer so and i don't know that because i i I've, no, I've, I think so. Uh, this. this year's, I think he's plans of paying out of the the twenty twenty one. He's already using city funds to pay for this year's. Well, he has also done fundraising for this year's project. Right. For the, so I, I think this is a, right. this is the next project because the the project this year was I only sixty six hundred dollars anyway. Right. right. It sounds to me like we need some more clarification here before we can really do this. Can we get him right. get him to come to our next meeting or something so we can clarify these questions or get him to provide more clarity? Uh, yeah, in I think writing. it would be really helpful. Yeah, I, but, I didn't hear yeah, from him that would one be helpful. or another about whether he was planning to attend today. So, As I said, I think he might be in Florida. Yeah, I think he is. May I ask a question about uh, one of the line items that he has here? It's $1,000 for the art consultant. Uh, given 
fact that he is, that we are funding, he's asking us to fund that expense. Uh, do we have any kind of documentation that goes along with that consultation fee? In other words, it's, do it's you understand really, my point? It's an individual who lives in Brooklyn. She's, she's the one that scouts the art essentially. And she does submit an invoice. I see. Yes. So if we get it, we have we have documentation that she submits an invoice. She she generally is one that attends the upfront to talk about the different. So and then the committee from there says, okay, we're interested of these eight that you found. Let's look at these four ones that we you know can afford or are interesting. And then the committee then starts narrowing down from there of choosing between that. Uh, They've been using her for a couple of years. She's the one who brought the water tower last year to them. Just out of curiosity, have we ever seen, I mean, not, or has it ever been discussed at the committee even as to what her parameters are? That's I mean, where I'm going with this. I mean, for example, yeah. is, 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 does, does the committee say to her, um, focus on a nautical theme or a whimsical theme? Or, I mean, do, do we know what her, her direction is focus, from focus. public art committee? I don't know. I'm not I don't either. That. I don't yeah, know. that's where I was going with my questioning. You know, the one thing, I, I, I love the idea of art being in public space. This is not what I'm uh, about. I mean, this is, I'm not complaining about this expense at all, uh, but I do like the idea of us uh, <laughs> focusing more on local, more homegrown, own art rather than people from artists from other communities. Um, and if we can show support for local artists, I'd like to see some effort made to bring them into this, uh, to be considered for this public art. I agree with Tim. I think the argument that's been made there is that since by nature, since they're local artists, they're they're here and they're this is bringing in something that normally you'd have to travel to the big city to, to go see. Right. I think that's. I that's see. The idea. Okay. I think well, the artists. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that though. I mean, it. I don't think you can compare local artists, for example, on display at um, Peninsula. Right, that's, no, that's I, I, I mean, that's not for me to debate. I'm just giving you the logic of, I'm just saying that I, I, I think that outdoor public exhibitions, uh, I can't think of how local artists have a venue for that. Um, I mean, I just think it's a, very different than having, you know, something in an indoor arena. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think Tim is raising a really good point, which is, and I, and I don't know how important is it to go to the big city? I mean, I think the, the important thing is to have quality art um, that hopefully has some relationship to, right. since this is being sponsored by the city of Lewis, hopefully has some relationship to some aspect of life in the city of Lewis. I mean, I, and I'm not saying it all has to be nautical or it all has to be beachy by any stretch just something to do even with the ethos of of the community you know i mean i think there's this why um, we need this is why we need cliff to be here at all to discuss this yeah. Yeah. so let's i'm not sure that we need to we can we can Definitely. resolve this without cliff's presence okay or let's some member of committee who chooses to go yeah, it'd be great to hear from him okay so then i think we can Thank move you. on to the planning commission and sure. is with us Janelle's with us, but um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow her to talk um, if she wants. I, it says allow to talk. I'm not being that bossy. It's, that's the button. Thank you, question. Planning Commission. Um, so, so Planning Commission is on page fifteen. Yes, fifteen. Thank now, you. Now I have had more recent interaction from Drew. And Drew had indicated he could not be here today. Um, he did believe, I, I let him know that we had $25,000 budgeted in the planning department um, for consulting services. 
he believes that they need 40,000 total. So that would mean another 15,000 to be budgeted in the planning commission line um, for consulting for them to move forward on items that are on their work plan for the year. So, so that's line number 5266, is that right? Yeah. You already have 25 of a budget. So you want to put 15 in this line? Is that what you're saying? Yes. No, we have. And why would you split it up, Anne Marie, between two lines? Well, so we've already budgeted for, the, uh, we could put it all in the planning department. Either way, it's fine. It would all be. Okay. I, I think um, that we could make a little bit cleaner from a, re, a viewing, for understanding the budget, I think, to have it all in one line. I think that would, I agree with you, Rob. So, and I think so 25 to here and add 15 to it for now. So, wait a minute, are we going to put it in the planning committee, commission, I'm sorry, budget, or are we going to put it in the planning department budget? The latter. Okay. Sorry? The planning department budget. Okay. You want to put it there? I don't, I don't mind either way, really, Ted, but. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I, but it seems to me that, um, you know, these are planning commission expenses. Um, and that's what this category is listed as. Okay, good, you're right. Well, but, but wait a minute. If, if we've already got the, the, the majority of the money in the planning department budget, I don't know. I mean, what this is, as I understand it, I mean, I don't know what these consulting services are even, even are. I'm not right? sure that they know yet, other than it, it, Drew did indicate that he thinks that, um, we might want to engage Tom West for some of the, the code updates they're discussing. Um, that's a different situation then. Well, the, but that's, that's the, the one he mentioned to me. Um, you know, they didn't have um, a clear, this is what the consulting would be for. It was more just, there are things that they need to do in the work plan that they believe they'll need consulting assistance for. Well, and Marie, would it matter well, which one it was in for purposes of your being able to monitor or control it? Um, theoretically, but, uh, no, but um, I, I, I worry that if it's in the commission's line that they might not realize that I, I need to authorize and you know if, if we're going to hire consultants for things you know I, I'm going to have a lot of questions you know what what's the need for the consultant what's the what's the scope what's the deliverable and and you know how does that relate to to what's in the work plan um if it's in the department budget I think it's easier in some ways to not argue about it well, I, just for what it's worth, I, I think that I think it makes. I am all for consultants. Let me be clear about that. This is not a question of cutting in this in this venue. I'm all for consultants. Yeah, that was that was strange. Can you ask it? I know, I know. Like I said, I've always thought that consultants for certain transitory um, purposes are a good thing. Um, so I, I don't. It, this is not a question of. This is not questioning the potential need that the planning commission right. may articulate in the future. This is a question of, to me, it makes more sense for this to be an in-house dollar amount, meaning in the planning, because we've got developed relationships. Janelle may know of people. I mean, having the planning commission have to go out and try to find appropriate consultants doesn't strike me as as efficient as having it within the planning department. So, so my, I, my, I'm sorry, do you mind if I just, Go ahead. Go ahead. My my, I guess my concern with it being in a commission line is that there are nine members of the planning commission, kind of each have have their own ideas, and I, I just want to make sure that we don't end up having having money accounted for or promised. I'm not promised, but do you know what I mean? Where everybody thinks I have this money and they start kind of making plans for it. I think it, if, if it's regardless of where it's budgeted, I think that the message needs to be clear that 
before any consultant is hired, um, questions be asked such as, is it a something that can be done in-house? Is it something that we don't have the expertise and therefore need an outside consultant? Is it something where we may have the expertise, but we don't have the time? That's where we would bring Tom West in. Is it something where we need data? Um, why, why is there the need for the data? Um, I just want to have a clear vetting process because I could see where with the best of intentions, money could kind of, you could have nine different people thinking that they all have claims to a pot of money without. It's at the same time, I'm not sure I follow that, Emory. We do have in our ordinance, I mean, it does say the planning commission shall have a budget uh, it, and it will be funded to carry out its plan. So, uh, I mean, I see your, your point. Uh, but at the same time, I want to empower the Planning Commission, which is doing such, so many good things, working so hard. Um, and, and I, I want to make them feel acknowledged and... and um, I'm honored. looking at page 613, which is where the uh, Planning, Depart Planning Commission uh, or the Planning Department's budget is. The only item on here that isn't related to the direct expenses associated with Janelle and and the personnel in the planning department is the consultant. That is the only item on here. Everything else is related to um, things that are directly associated with um, that structure. Okay, what, what page were you referencing? Page 13. 13, 13 okay. 13. And, and that's the departmental budget. That's the departmental budget. Right. So the so, departmental budget pretty much pays for Janelle. That's and, right. And so the, this is the planning commission as a whole. I don't see there where I think we're splitting hairs here. I think either way, Anne Marie, you have control over it. Thanks. So, I, that's what I want to speak to. Uh, uh, we do not, not expect uh, any planning commissioner uh, to have purchasing uh, capabilities. That's the responsibility of, of Anne Marie and staff. So they can make a request for a consultant, but it has to come through the professional staff in order for someone to be hired. I don't see this as a, I think there's actually value in, uh, in funding the line item in the commission on a commission level. And then also keep, uh, keep uh, Janelle's department funded as well for her consultancies. But I think they, are, they should be kept separate. I'm inclined to agree with that. Yeah. I mean, because we're leaving separate. Yeah, I, 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 I follow Tim's logic as well. It also gives them a sense of responsibility to sort of steward, yeah. to steward that budget, you know. I think it gives them a sense of opportunity. Right. Rather than, yeah. Well, I can certainly talk I, I actually, through so that he, he, you know, has a clear vetting process set up. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. That's what I was, that's what I was going to say. I it, if you want to put it in, I think it's I think it's not the best course, but I don't really care. But what is most important about all of this is I think what Anne Marie was trying to very politely say, which is that the we have to send clear guidance to the, the commission as a whole and the commissioners individually that they cannot go out and beat the bushes to find someone and interview them and say, tell me what it's gonna cost and go through all that process. They, they need to come through the staff in the first instance, not at the end of the game. Right. right. Okay, so where are we gonna leave this? Right. What are we gonna do with it? <laughs> I mean, there's... It, <laughs> I mean, There's we're no way to we, sort of in back and forth. We've come full circle on this on this discussion. Sure, but I've got one more question, Anne Marie. The the twenty five that's currently under the planning department budget is that intended to provide consulting for the planning commission? I I read that as separate. I, I thought that was Tom West money. Well, that's going to be for the planning commission. That is. So. If that's Tom West money, then why don't we put all 40,000 in the planning commission budget, which I for really the first time will have its own budget, which our ordinance 
calls for. I think that is a very, very bad idea. We don't have any commission board or committee in this city that has anywhere near a budget like that. I, the Parks and Rec has a huge budget, much, much bigger. Yeah, but it's, but it's atomized into a gazillion different discrete things that we can track year after year. What we have here is, a, as I understand it, is a request for monies without, because they think they might need it without anything behind it. And that makes me very nervous. I mean, I'm not gonna stand in the way of this. You wanna put it in their budget, that's fine. But I think you're, I think you're, well, you're asking for trouble. I, well, I do, I do want to keep some money in the planning department budget for Tom because there are times where Janelle calls on Tom. Okay. Um, it, you know, it, and that was kind of the arrangement we set up to begin with. So I, I don't want it to become questioned if it's all in that in the commission budget and she's drawing on Tom and we charge it there. You know. They Let's give them each twenty and see who's but and challenge them to see who spends less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or more. <laughs> yeah. But I think I think as we all know, the planning commission is is as a very has been very ambitious, and sometimes that has taken them in um in in a in 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 ways that have been independent of other city initiatives, and that's caused some some friction and some slippage. So. Uh, I think if you put all the money in into that budget, that that, that exacerbates that concern. So, would you like to keep back, Anne Marie? Pardon me. How much would you like to keep back out of um, the forty? So maybe we keep fifteen thousand in the planning department and twenty five in the commission, and that's their consulting. and And if they have a big project that they want to give to Tom. That, that may get paid you know one way or another we're gonna get the bills paid right. 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 you know what i mean we're not gonna um, right. I, um but but i do think my concern with putting it all under the commission is janelle may get questioned about why she spent xyz money and it's that's not what it's there for do you know what i mean all right, right. So, so do i understand correctly amory your suggestion is that line number 5266 would be funded to the level of 15,000. Is that correct? Yes. That is okay. Correct. Thank you. And, and the commission gets the balance. On page 13. And the commission gets 25. Okay. Yeah, correct. So, so 5266 goes to 25. And well, it depends on which page. They're both 5266. So on page 13, 5266 goes to 15. It gets reduced by $10,000. Right. And on the other one, it goes to 25. Right, on page 15. Right. Okay. It goes to 20 from 1,000. Right. Uh, it's at zero. It'll go to. But it'll go from zero to 25. Right. I thought my line, oh, I'm reading the wrong line. I apologize. Yes. You're right, Eleanor, and I apologize. Okay. All the right. Supplies the, the, the supplies and things tend to be fairly consistent. Are those like uh, literally a, a laptop that they're using, or what is the? You mean the 3500? Yeah. It's miscellaneous. Yeah. Because yeah, over the last few years, uh, it's always been 3,500, is it? Yeah. We have put it oh. there, the budget, because we do not know the allocation. Yeah. Uh, this what year, kinds of things do, year, what kind of call, expenses do they have that fall into miscellaneous, Ellen Lorraine? Do you have that any examples? Is, that's a placeholder. So for example, if you look at the, as of January, 2021, 1,054 has been spent in clerical. Sure. And so just plug 3,500 into that commission budget and it goes into the account 5,364. And then when it is spent- So you draw against it. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. 
So I see. Okay, thank here you. We budget if we're clerical. And thank I'm you. sorry. So this this is another one of those lines that is uh, can't be understood without another looking at another line. What is the the line that goes into when it's spent? So far, they've only had clerical expenses. So that is fifty two seventy eight. It's been the line that has is showing me. Seventy eight on on. Uh, Oh, I see. Got, got it. I have a question about their uh, their budget. Um, I noticed that there's no money of uh, for advertising and uh, and zoning changes. And my question is, it seems to me that there are on occasion there are notices that are published in the newspaper that I assume that there's. Some fees associated with getting them published that are plan related yes that, under that what goes, please that, that goes to our advertising line it goes where our advertising line it's a general line i or can't operating i, I saw okay or i heard well, something on npr about this it's called i can't remember what it's called but there's apparently a delay when you start talking and then by the time you hear, apparently this is happening all over the world right now. So I, I'm going to read this under the general, the general, uh, what? The general expense for the city hall for your office? Yes. And for all right. Well, then why do we, why are we continuing? Okay, operating. Why are we, should we then delete this line item from the budget? It was spent in 2019. So I think they just left it there to kind of show what was spent in the past. Right. But how many, what, as a, uh, what, is the, what is the practice in accounting for carrying a budget online item for how many years before you drop it? This is just an Excel spreadsheet. When you're not funding it. This is just an Excel spreadsheet. So next year, when we work on the twenty-three right. budget, always. Ice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you look on, if you look over on page uh, nineteen, you've got the advertising budget, which is large. Okay. All right. So. Is there any further discussion on that? If not, we can move then on to Parks and Rec. So thank you, Janelle. And let's go to Parks and Rec with bringing Janet to us. And we're on page, page 14 for that. Thanks. I'm going to share my screen. Janet's going to go through a PowerPoint. Great. Is this PowerPoint available to us? It's right there on your screen. Well, no, but I mean, has it been emailed oh. to us? It, it has not been emailed. Could you do that, empty. please? It, it's, all, it's all numbers that are in the actual budget on page 14. All right. Okay, good afternoon. Good to see everybody. Um, so what I'd like to do first on the on the next slide, um, 2021 was obviously certainly an unusual, 2020 was an unusual year, fiscal year 2021. I just wanted to hit some highlights from the department. Um, we did have some uh, great accomplishments this past year. We had um, just over a thousand volunteer hours in the parks. Um, we had uh, a little over 250 applications for bonfires. Um, obviously there were certain circumstances where those were um, canceled due to um, COVID and the oil spill in the fall, but we um, do get a lot of requests for bonfires. 
Um, we did in July 2020, we did tree pruning and clearing so that the city maintenance and trash trucks had clearance when they were doing their rounds throughout the city. Uh, this fall, we removed Bradford pears that were around the uh, buffer of the blockhouse pond at George H. P. Smith Park. And we completed the residential portion of the second street project that included removal of trees that were diseased and dying um, and clearing out the ground cover in the bump outs, replanting trees and mulching. So it really did make a, a nice uh, impression on the residential portion and carried through what we did uh, on the uh, business section. May I ask a couple of questions about this slide? Um, the third and fifth bullets, I don't know why they're in the parks budget versus the maintenance budget. Um, well, because it's it, it has to do with the trees and the pruning of the trees and planting of trees. Um, so that comes out of the, the park budget. So in the residential portion of Second Street was um, a capital improvement. Okay. And we approved in last year's budget. Or yeah, I, remember, year's budget. I remember, but uh, thank you. And... Uh, and Janet, the thousand volunteer hours are over and above the Lewis and Bloom hours. That does not count. Yes, that, yes, that's correct. That's just through the commissioners, um, the Stango Park concert series. We have two volunteers outside of the commission uh, that work on that too, welcoming guests and doing head counts and whatnot. And do you get anything from Lewis and Bloom in terms of the volunteer hours they calculate that they've spent on? I, I have not. I can certainly ask for that for future hearings. I just um, think it would be helpful for uh, everybody to understand the hours that Lewis and Bloom puts in. Okay, I will certainly sure, do that. Has, for the or in here. Maryland or somebody has information. Okay, I can certainly do that. Great, thank you. Next, oh, thank you. <laughs> We did um, hold the summer concert series in 2020. Um, initially, we had scheduled 12 concerts. We scheduled all those early in the year. And when COVID hit in March, we obviously made some adjustments. We did hold eight concerts. Uh, seven were paid. One was no charge to the city. The military bands do not uh, charge the city for their presence. Um, we paid a total of uh, 5850 in band performance fees, and the total that was spent on marketing concert expenses and the bands was 10543 We had a lot of very positive feedback. Um, we put in uh, precautions for uh, families being socially distanced from other families. We made sure that people were wearing masks. We um, had hand sanitizer. We had portable um, porta potties because the Rollins Center was closed and those restrooms could not be used. Um, the survey results indicated that people felt safe. They were thankful to the city um, for um, giving them some sense of normalcy and being able to get outside. Um, so all things considered, I think it was quite a success. Um, we did not have a rain date in 2020 because that's usually held at the, at the high school. And of course that was closed uh, due to COVID. So all things considered, I think it was a success given the challenges that we faced. Um, and we did receive um, very good feedback from those who participated. So I just wanted to hit a couple of highlights from last year before we moved on. Janet, Janet before, before you... Go ahead. Go ahead, Ross. No, go ahead. <laughs> I had a question about the last slide. Um, I, I think the uh, events, the summer concerts number was 10,543, but I'm trying to tie that into the budget. And I see 5332 is 6350. Uh, what was the rest of the money? Um, yeah, sorry, the, line, the line item again is 5233. And 5332 is called summer concerts. Oh, correct. Um, that's um, at 
eleven thousand this year. And mm -hmm. in several yeah, years, see, I'm sorry. I see actuals listed as sixty three fifty. So part of part of um, the concert series, we do request a grant, um, and we do have sponsorship uh, from WSF. WSFS Bank. Um, so that would be um, through those grant projects. Either the grant is um, the Delaware Division of the Arts and then WSFS Bank. So the 10,543 minus the grant minus the uh, uh, public contributions is what we see in the budget as actuals. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Janet, I have a question for you. Regarding the second bullet uh, on the screen, uh, can you distinguish, uh, explain what a 5850 for band performance fees and then okay. and then the 10,543 where it says on bands. How, is, how do you distinguish between a performance fee and a band? Call, the cost of the ban. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, it's their it's their fee for the performance. Okay, so it's 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 that like that's the performance. Charge. I'm sorry. It's what the band Please go ahead. I'm listening. The city I apologize. To come and perform at the summer concert series. So there's roughly right. another five thousand. And my question spent. is on the marketing and such. Exactly. So roughly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So right. The, but it's not on bands. It's spent on the marketing and the concert expenses. Correct. So I, Do you I understand. Can go, I can go See where it says. From, let, me, let me go down through the uh, final report that is sent to DDOA. Um, we had seven artists seven performance groups that were paid for their performance. And we had one performance that was free. They did not charge us. Then we had marketing and printing. We had arts, materials, and supplies. So we made posters um, and with, with you know, COVID restrictions we marked spots in the grass where family units could sit and were separated from the next family unit. We have mosquito spraying that we do only in Sango Park for the summer concert series. So that is specific to this project. Um, we had some repairs to the stage. Um, then we had the rental equipment for the porta potties that I mentioned earlier. And then, um, we had the Parks and Marina administration time um, working uh, on the concert series at night. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Ellen Lorraine, the, the WSFS grant, that doesn't show up anywhere else in the budget, does it? It no. says for the grant revenue and then the expenditure. So the expenditure of that is on page 21. And the revenue for that is page five. Then I'm, okay. Um, let me look at page five just a moment because I'm looking for it and I didn't see it. Intergovernmental grant? It is the last four are 4690600 is for the Division of Arts and 0601 is WSFS. Okay, it's called an intergovernmental grant, but that's inaccurate for this. Okay, thank you. And on page 21, you've got uh, 5513 as the DDOA grant. Yeah. And the 5514 as the 2500 from WSFS. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to move on. Thank you. Okay. 
So what I'm what I've done is I'm really going over the line items where there were significant decreases or increases. Um, if there was no change, you have that information on page 14 in, in the budget under our Parks and Rec Commission budget. So item line item 5201 is the Lewis and Bloom donation. Um, they did quite a bit of fundraising last year, so their request for donation this year is a 20% decrease um, of $8,000 down from $10,000. Which was actually down fourth, which was actually down greater than that because right. we, actually, we actually approved $12,000 and then we amended it down to ten. dollars So they've, they've reduced their budget request by a third. I think that sounds like music to my ears. What do you think, guys? <laughs> I think it's. Well, I think it represents it? a great deal of generosity on people who donated to them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, absolutely. It it does, but remember that the, if I recall correctly, it went from twelve ten thousand west of Lewis and Bloom because they did Lewis and Bloom wanted to discontinue watering plants on second street and so right. that responsibility was transferred to the city of lewis in exchange for a reduction in the in the donation so i'm not uh, i'm not taking a thing away from lewis i just you're right you're right okay okay all right let's move on Next slide uh so line 5246 is maintenance equipment um, this really encompasses uh, the dog waste bags that we put in the parks to keep the parks clean, um, yard waste bags for the park commissioners to use as they, you know, do their uh, cleanups in the parks. The big change here was American Sanitation. Uh, they had an increase in their rental price for the coming fiscal year. Um, so their single units um, increased uh, about 6%, and the uh, unit that's down at Roosevelt Inlet, which is um, a little bit bigger, increased about 14%. The unit at Roosevelt Inlet um, comes in uh, in May and is removed in uh, by the end of October. Um, so it's not a full year that that rental is there, but the other ones are a full year. So that increase is, is predominantly um, because of the increase in their rental fees. And that's a porta potty, yes. Jenna? And where's the, there's one at Roosevelt so, Inlet. Where's the um, other one? There's one down by Smith Park, the parking lot down by Smith Park. And um, in... Um, George H. P. Smith Park. There are two. Two, yes. So one at Otis Smith and one yeah. at George H. P. Smith. Thank you. There's essentially five K a, a pop. Yeah. Twenty five hundred, I hope. There's two. There are two of three, right? Four. Okay. Next. Oh, there next. a total of four. Two at wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, Janet, I want to ask you a question. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to ask a question. Uh, is this a uh, competitive bid? Uh, and, and that's a, that seems to me like to be a very large increase to be realized in a one year uh, period. And does that not raise some curiosity that possibly this vendor you know, how does he justify this kind of increase? Well, I think some of it too was uh, the cleaning. We had increased cleaning too due to the COVID. Um, so that also bumps up the, the price. So he had built that into the, the fees. And Janet, are we planning to, to ratchet back the cleaning to the previous schedule or to keep it at the the COVID schedule, even after the state of emergency is over? Uh, well, certainly after the state of emergency is over, we go back to what we did previous to the pandemic. I think right now, um, you know, we'll, we're moving forward cautiously. Obviously, um, vaccines are being rolled out. 
Um, and I think, you know, I, we're always watching the numbers of cases. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to roll it back in the not too distant future. Because I thought um, I heard some, some discussion of maybe keeping it at a, at a more frequent level, but that's fine. Thank well, what is the, uh, what Janet, what was the pre-pandemic uh, schedule for cleaning the porta potties? That's a good question. Um, I was not here in the position, so I'd have to investigate that for you unless um, Anne-Marie or Ellen Lorraine know what that was, but I would certainly be able to look into that for you. My recollection, and Ellen Lorraine, you can cor correct me if I'm wrong, is that they clean them when they dump them. I don't think there was any supplement. And how free, what's that frequency? I think we increase the frequency to three times a week or four times a week. And they also provided um, hand sanitization and. Right, right, but that's under the, co the COVID pre-pandemic. It was probably just a couple times a week, right? Yeah. Correct. I think we can safely expect that we will be uh, using the more frequent cleaning schedule throughout the summer season. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next slide, please. So line 5248 is our maintenance of the lawns and grounds. Um, this was a three-year contract awarded to distinctive landscaping. Um, that contract had uh, the option to do a one to two year extension, um, which we did for this year. Um, and with that extension, there was a 5% increase. Um, it was 106,000 and, and change. Um, and you see it's now 111,930. Um, one of the reasons why we considered the extension, the um, commissioners have had some discussions about breaking out um, the lawn maintenance from uh, tree contracts, the truning, uh, pruning, planting, the limbing that we do to maintain the health of the trees. Um, many lawn maintenance companies don't have the specialty of the tree care maintenance. Um, so this gave us some time to um, look at if we do want to break that out. Um, and Distinctive has been with the city for many years. Um, so that was just a 5% increase for the extension for two years of the contract. Ellen Lorraine, the, um, there's a note in red in parentheticals on that line. I think I get it, but could you read the whole thing to us? I says maintenance grounds lawns includes bed maintenance for FY19. Bed is long, big. Oh, thank you. In, the, in accepting this next year, the, the additional years of the contract, have we been able to negotiate with them regarding their frequency, their the timing of their mowing? We've had several incidents in the past year where things were not mowed prior to a holiday or prior to something going on. Uh, have we been able to negotiate that with, with Olson? I, I can certainly have that discussion with him. I think- um, I know he's got some issues personnel-wise. Right. When things are brought to his attention, he, he does, he's generally responsive. I, right. I talked with all of the commissioners um, and you know they were satisfied. He did have some difficulty last year with his work crew. Um, he has hired um, several foremen, per se, crew supervisors, um, and I think that that has definitely been helpful. But I will certainly have that conversation with him. Now, the other thing that I've had observations just shared from the public is that his people are not wearing masks uh, when they're, so that just might be a point of just mentioning it to his attention, bringing it to his attention. Okay. okay. And Janet, that uh, that line item is that just for our 
uh, city park lands, or is that all city maintained no, that, properties? No, that's just for the work in the parks. Okay. So, and, and they do work around City Hall as well. And um, they mow out on park, just the um, area just uh, between the Great Marsh Park and the, and the roadway, they do that. And Janet, I remember uh, tying into what okay. the mayor was saying that one year at least, the, the mowing company, I'm not sure who, if it was distinctive or not, mowed the uh, daffodils before their time. <laughs> and you heard about that. And so if you could, in your asking them to time their mowing, take that into account. I will. Too. And I was talking with the park commissioners yesterday for um, George H.P. Smith Park, and we're talking about staking that area off. Um, so right. that it it doesn't get mowed down inadvertently too early, pre bloom or post bloom. Yeah. You might also. Uh, we learned the other day that Lewis and Bloom has planted over two thousand bulbs, daffodil bulbs, in Canal Front Park. Canal I don't Front. know if they're all in beds or if they're in lawn. Wow. I think they're in beds, but I will check with them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, line 5290, conferences, seminars, and travel. Um, the big, big decrease here was because of travel. Um, all of the conferences and seminars um, are being done virtually. Um, so that, that accounts for the 67.90% decrease. Um, but we are still doing the conferences and the, the seminars. Okay, next line, please. I just want to, we have a chat, a comment in the chat from Marty. Oh, okay. It says, I, I helped plant the daffodils in Canal Front Park. Um, they are in beds, not grass. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marty. Thank you. Okay, this is a very small decrease on line 5294, it's dues and subscriptions. It basically amounts to $5. I, I rounded it down to an even number and that really is the truth. <laughs> 705 just didn't make sense to me. Okay, next slide, please. Line 5351 is the seasonal decorations uh, for the Christmas holiday. Um, I'm sure you all have seen the beautiful lights on 2nd Street and in Mary Vessels and 1812 Park. Um, we also have a tree that, an artificial tree that's down at the end of 2nd Street in the, uh, that's placed in the Lewis Historical Society grounds. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear. Could you say that again? Sure. Um, we have an artificial Christmas tree that is placed in the Lewis Historical Society grounds at the end of Second Street. Um, Has that been there before? Yes. For about five years. Okay. I, I it, it's it's been there. Um, it was purchased in two thousand and seven, so it was probably in another location. Um, the, the general life of um, the trees are 10 to 12 years. Um, so this, there's a proposal to replace that tree um, with another a new tree with a warranty of 10 years on the frame um, and six years on the LED light. Um, the garlands that are installed on the lamp posts on 2nd Street and some of the side streets in the downtown uh, district were purchased in 2009. And they generally have an eight to 10 year life. Um, so there's a request to um, replace uh, some of those garlands um, 
six poles were added in 2018. They had to be relit, uh, new, new lights in 2020. Um, so the majority of that is um, the tree and the new installation with um, garlands and bows for the coming year. The new install, I'm sorry, I didn't follow all of that. There's some Second Street stuff and there's some LHS stuff. And you said the, it was requested. Who requested these things? Um, it was a discussion. The vendor that we use is Christmas Decor um, over in Nassau. Um, so he had um, given me the information that some of the items may be at the end of their life. And I asked him for the estimate so that I could present it to you all today. Okay, I usually think of things at the end of their life when they start to go to, to fail. Uh, do we have any uh, indication that the lights no longer work? Um, we did have some difficulty this year with lights. Now, some of them were the eye sensors. Um, but as I walked down at night, I did note that on some of the garlands, um, they may have been half lit, they may have been out completely. We had to, I had to have the electrician from Shore Electric come down and, you know, make sure it wasn't the eye. We had one, uh, one tree. A couple of trees on Second Street that we had issues with. One was an electrical problem that we actually did not fix this year. So that's in, in the budget um, further down. Um, but we, we did have some, some issues. Does, um, I mean, I, I see the, the, the point of the Second Street lights keeping them um, because there's a lot of traffic there. Mm. But it seems to me, uh, LHS may have its own ideas about a tree and it's, it's got its own budget for decorations. I'd be inclined to stick with the, the second street part, but, but uh, leave the artificial tree alone for this year. I have a question. Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, who owns these decorations? Are these uh, decorations that the city has purchased or are these, uh, do we rent these from uh, Christmas decor? No, these, these are purchased and from Christmas decor. Christmas decor stores them for us. And then they do the installation at the beginning of the season and the takedown. And all of that is included in, uh, in, the, in the budget. So they, yeah, they budget for furnishing and installing. Okay, that was my. Yes. Yeah. It shed a little more light okay. on that. So, so it's for labor. Just offer a little more light. The, the, initial the initial purchase of the decorations on the on the lamp on the street post uh, was largely funded by donations from the community. The city put in a certain amount of money, okay. and that, but it was matched and exceeded by um, by donations from the community. Uh, and it is all owned by the city. It used to be it used to be stored by the Board of Public Works. It is no longer stored by the Board of Public Works. They and uh, this does not. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, do, how about you know the snowflakes that are put on the uh, on the utility poles? That's what I'm talking that's, about. That was that's all. A, oh, you are. That was all funded by by was, a lot of it was funded through donation. There was a whole committee that worked on that that right. included uh didn't include any members of council uh it included just community members who were very interested in upgrading our our christmas decorations right right so i remember hearing at meetings in previous years where they talked about the uh the, those snowflakes being stored in some city-owned facility or uh i believe over BPW. possibly it was a bpw facility Okay, the, and so the now the snowflakes are, are here. The, the snowflakes are still stored at, at the BPW. Everything else is stored through um, Christmas Day Corps. And okay, 
the Christmas, the snowflakes are installed by BPW. Right. So, um, Janet, if you took out the uh, the artificial, uh, replacing the artificial tree, what that would that bring the request down to? That would decrease it by $5,700. Um, I'd like to do that. Is, is that the, the feeling of the council? I'm sorry, the tree costs $5,700? Yes, it's a 14 foot tree. And that, includes, that includes the, um, the stakes and the ratchet straps to hold it in place. But yes, and uh, if I understood Mike correctly, that uh, was a sale price. Hey, Janet, have you ever asked them if they would, uh, if we could get into a lease arrangement instead of an ownership arrangement with this stuff? Uh, I can certainly ask if there is that option. I was gonna ask just in general, as a, as a municipality nowadays, how, what's the view on having like a crisp, like a city again, sponsoring Christmas decorations as opposed to just the general holiday theme? I mean, should we think about getting like a menorah and, you know, some a Kwanzaa display and th these kinds of things as well? Well, that was the thought of the, in the original selection of the snowflake is they were generic. Uh, well, the things that are on light poles and the garlands across the street that they were not specific to a to any particular uh, religious holiday. The Christmas tree is another story. I guess I'm with Rob. I'm I'm with Rob on this one as well. I mean, I think to me, five five, five grand for an artificial tree seems you know, maybe we can get at least another year out of it. And, and in general, should it be something that the city provides? Um, I we don't can, know. Yeah. And we could do a Charlie Brown Christmas and let it just kind of desiccate itself out there. And <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Rob and, and I'll make the pitch I've made many times, which is since the city co-sponsors the, uh, the parade that we stop calling it the Christmas parade and call it the holiday parade. All right, so we're going to remove the 5700 from this. And why don't we, and I'd like also Janet to inquire about leasing this stuff rather than owning it. Well, I think we already own it all, Tim. For most part. Oh yeah, I know, but we're, but some part, some part of this cost is associated with replacing the worn out aged uh, stuff, the stuff that's not working correctly. And, and is this Isn't display that right, an Jane? area that that tends to they tend to swap out displays or anything, or could we, there be a possibility that they would plant a, a real tree there? I doubt that they plant a real tree. It's right at the foot of Second Street. It blocks okay. the view to the the house at the end of the street. So I think they would be. I doubt they would plant a real tree. We could certainly have that conversation with them. We already have a donated real tree over in. Uh, Zwanadale Park, which is growing. And then uh, we've had a donated cut tree for the last two years in Zwanadale Park that was donated by some member of the community who wanted to have their tree taken down. Last, it was for the last two years, it's been the same family that has donated the tree. Hmm. And maybe she moved <clears throat> to just have a drone go over Lewis and select the tree that we want, just like they do for Either tree you know, has Rockefeller Center. Neither tree has come out of anybody that's within the geographical boundaries of the city. But they're waiting to be annexed. Oh. All right. Okay, so line 5490 um, is miscellaneous. Um, and this actually uh, is the expense for the tennis court resurfacing. Um, that was moved to the transfer tax fund, which is 4605905474, page 26 of the budget, which is why it's a uh, 100% decrease because it was transferred. 
Um, and that project is moving forward. And then the second piece to this slide is um, the expense for the George H.P. Smith uh, as well was moved to the transfer tax fund. And they were both in this same line, Janet? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Bo. Any questions there? No. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> line 5501 Second Street. Um, we had an increase of 15 and a half percent. Um, and essentially, um, that is electrical repairs, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we had some issues with the electric. We had one tree where there was um, no line to, um, no electrical power. Um, so it's um, fixing those electrical issues and then the banners for uh, Second Street. Uh, line 5502. Janet. Uh Janet, real quick question. I notice on Second Street, there's, I believe, at least one light pole that is missing, has been re removed. Did that have anything to do with the elect electrical work your electrician did? No, actually, um, are, you're talking about down on the residential section of Second Street? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was hit by a landscaping truck back in... Uh, 2019, um, I have been gotten the police report and filed the insurance claim. Um, so hopefully we can get that replaced, but I haven't heard anything yet. But that, that didn't have anything Thank to you. do with the electrical issues. While you're working on okay. that claim, you, you. Might also want to look, you might also want to look at a bollard that's been missing in front of Citizens Bank for at least three years. Yes, I saw that yeah. too. Yeah. Right. Yep. So um, 1812 Park had a decrease of um, just over 39%, $3,315. That was basically um, last year, uh, there was a purchase of the self-watering planters. Um, so obviously that was a one-time purchase. And um, so the budget came down this year. Um, it does include uh, tulips, um, which were previously uh, provided by the chamber. Um, so there wasn't an, uh, an increase in the budget for the tulips, but it still shows a decrease because of the uh, self-watering planters that were purchased last year. And Janet, is, is a Lewis and Bloom planting the bulbs? For they us? plant all the bulbs. Yes. They do any of the planters, any, any of the beds, it's done by Lewis and Bloom. That's great of them. Just, uh, just by way of information, I got some information that while we've been talking. Uh, Lewis and Bloom founded 24,210 tulip bulbs and 4,000 spring bulbs this year. Uh, wow. and it, had, it was planted by 50 members representing 400 volunteer hours. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, line 53, 5503 Canal Front Park, um, we showed a decrease of just over 5% um, with a budget request of 13,820. Um, this does include uh, the Arbor Care tree maintenance. Um, and it's basically the, the plantings, um, maintenance of the, the pathways uh, throughout the park. You'll know that they, they have the crushed stone. Um, so it's uh, a small, small decrease uh, for the park. Okay. Next. Has there been anything, was there any consideration given to the, the tree that the, the willow oak in front of uh, the net house that has been languishing for a couple of years? Yeah. So it's been looked um, at. It did not look well at the end of the growing season last year. 
Right. Um, we have uh, the three river birch. Um, there's six river birch in the park, right. but there's right. three we're taking down and replacing with tupelos. And in that project, we're, we're also taking down the willow oak and replacing the, the willow oak. Okay, good. Thank you. I know Marty was, was on earlier. Jan, is this, generally the tree maintenance, like things when Arbor Care comes, is that because Marty's directed you that, hey, this is a tree that, that needs some well, repair? This is a, it, it's a contract. And basically they're working in um, Canal Front Park and Stango Park. So um, both of those two park budgets have um, an inclusion for Arbor Care services. The, the trees down at Canal Front Park um, really, for lack of a better term, they take a beating with the weather down there. Um, so they do require a lot of, a lot of special attention. And there were a few issues um, with trees up at the, um, the, the trailhead in Stango Park area. Okay, so in those cases, sometimes Arbor Care has a little autonomy in terms of just clearing up loose limbs and et cetera. Okay. Right. Okay. So is uh, uh, the Arbor Care Arborists, are they actually making their own assessments of the health of the trees and then advising you as what the need is? What their what, recommendations what they, are? What they're looking for is, is um, scale, fungi, bugs, um, and sure. they, they're they much better at identifying that than, than I am. Um, so yes, they come in and do the assessment and the treatment, and um, then they give us a report on what they've done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, line 5504, 5505, um, George H. P. Smith Park. Um, we had an increase of 41% uh, um, with 13,885. Um, we are doing annual water testing at Black Blockhouse Pond. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, they're um, working on the, the new school building. And there has been a pipe for stormwater runoff that is going into the pond. So we did a, uh, an initial assessment of the pond water and we'll do that, um, I don't know, a couple of years so that we can assess any um, changes in the baseline status of the pond. Um, we hey, have, Janet? Yes. Just real quick question. I, I frankly, I just don't remember. I remember when this came up and the school district asked if they could run this pipe. And I remember the whole discussion about uh, keeping an eye on, um, on what, if any, effect that had on the water quality in Blockhouse Pond. But what I don't recall, I recall a discussion about who was going to pay for that testing. Um, and I, th I thought we left it that the... Um, that the school district was going to pay. I believe you're right, Bonnie. Okay. And what is that costing us for that kind of uh, ana water analysis? Uh, the one that was done in 2020 was just over a thousand dollars. Uh huh. It was a and they just did one last year. Is that right? And I'm sorry, I may have missed, but uh, Janet, what accounts for the increase? Is it the water testing that's bumping this up? So it's the water testing. Um, we're uh, doing the EnviroTech monthly maintenance. Um, we started that mid-year last year because there was um, a great deal of poison ivy and invasive foliage in around the buffer. Um, and then we're adding uh, plantings along the um, perimeter of the park on the BB Hospital side. Uh, there's a great deal of runoff from the parking lot at BB, and uh, there's significant erosion around the pond on that side of, of the pond. So the hope is that with some plantings, 
um, it will help with that that runoff. Um, and there's, I, I know um, Harry and Ed and I went around with the EnviroTech team not too long ago. And there's, there's some significant erosion around the pond and there may be consideration of a, a, a living shoreline at some point. Yeah, I was gonna ask that, Jen, that was discussed in the last meeting. So those costs aren't in here yet, obviously, no, right? No, no. Yeah, so just so everyone, she's referring to some pretty significant, they actually call it like scale under erosion. Right. So the dirt's kind of looks like a shelf is sitting there, but it's eroding underneath. Um, and as Janet said, it looks like it will require some construction of a, of a living shoreline to, sh to um, yeah. bring it back up to health. And I think that, I can't remember, it was like a few thousand dollars of per, per hundred feet or something like that, it right? Was, um, what Todd from EnviroTech said was that it was approximately $3,000 for a hundred feet. Um, and so we're we're trying to get more information from him and you know get somebody that is um, a professional in living shorelines to kind of you know give us an assessment. But again, that's not for this budget year. Um, we're looking at that probably for next year, but eventually it's going to be a, a significant need. And to echo Tim, are we looking at a competitive bid for that? Um, yeah, I, I, we could. I don't think we're there yet um, because we just started talking about this literally last last month. Okay, thank and, you. And the other thing I would I, suggest is in, involving the school board in this one as well. If they're going to be using the pond as an outflow, then that's going to contribute to the yeah. issue. So they should share in that. Yeah, there also you know is. What a, who, let me tag them. Go ahead, Tim. What was that, Tash? Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, if if we know that some of the uh, drainage is coming from uh, BB Hospital towards the pond, have we brought this to BB's attention and asked them to help uh, uh, mediate or remediate the problem that is originating from their side of the property line? Uh, I don't know. I think that's a fair ask. I know that um, they were looking at um, doing some changes to that lot and extending the, go the parking garage. So there's those low buildings in the parking lot that I believe they're um, taking down and putting up a parking garage. So I'm not sure how that will will impact. And um, I don't know, Mayor, if you have any other, uh, any additional information on the status of that? Well, the Bob is slated for de demolition. The, uh, the, B, the old nursing home is slated for demolition. What will happen after that is still up for discussion. Uh, so I think, I think what's happening there is, is sheet flow, not actual drainage, not, not uh, actual piping of water. It's, it's sheet flow right. off of the lot. So uh, it's slightly different than what we're talking about from the school district. But in terms of a living shoreline, a, a resource that you may want to consider is the University of Delaware's Department of Agriculture. As a school, uh, has a program run by uh, Dr. Jules Bruck, who specializes in uh, living shoreline kinds of things. She's done a project uh, uh, over in uh, Laurel, and she's working on a project in front of the uh, the DeVries Monument. Okay. Uh, she has her graduate students uh, who have taken on projects. She may be able to take this. I can get you information as to how to contact her. That would be great. That would be and great. And that that's all done at no charge. Thank you. In terms of design and evaluation. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Appreciate that. So moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> Uh, item 5506 is Mary Vessels Park. Um, there was a small increase there. Um, again, that was due to uh, the tulips um, not being provided by the chamber. So that's been built into to the budget here. And 
5507 Stango Park. Um, we had a 72 and a quarter percent increase for $9,560. Um, there's a request for patio furniture for the uh, Rollins Center. Um, to give some seating area. There's, there's really nothing on that patio and this would just give a little seating area, picnic tables. Um, we uh, have a couple of um, ideas, you know, bistro table versus picnic type, uh, picnic style type table. Um, it also includes um, some sort of signage or securing it so that they don't develop legs and disappear. Um, I think one of the concerns about the bistro table was those can be picked up and kind of carried away. So um, just to keep them secured in their location. Um, so that's what that increase is. Observation I would share about that is we've had picking, we've had round tables and chairs on at the net house for over four years with no loss. Right. Yeah. That's true. Janet, um, may I interrupt you for a second and ask you, uh, I noticed there were a couple times when you've mentioned at different parks where the chamber is no longer funding the tulips, the material costs. Uh, did the chamber give the city notice that they were going to be withdrawing their funding? Uh, a year or two ago so that we could plan for this? Um, I, I don't know when the notification would have come, um, but uh, uh, the, the two park commissioners um, clearly had, had knowledge and, and um, included it in their budget. I don't know if anybody, Mayor or Anne Marie knows when that. Well, the, that chamber was, the chamber has never actually paid for them. The chamber had had some donated money from uh, from a sponsor. Uh, that money has dried up, but I believe Lewis and Bloom actually paid for most of those bulbs. So uh, I, I'm not aware uh, of the, the numbers that you're citing, citing here as being directly attributable to the city having reimbursed for the bulbs. I, I that was news to me as I'm seeing this. I Bessie could, would, pardon. Bessie could respond to that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Betsy's with us. Do you want me to unmute her? She would like to comment. Sure. You, if you want to comment, you can, Betsy. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Betsy. Okay. Yes. Um, my understanding uh, throughout this, since we, we started uh, purchasing the tulips, is that the chamber paid for the entire cost of the tulips. Um, part of it was underwritten by a sponsor, but the rest of it was paid for by the chamber. Uh, we, we weren't able to get other sponsors. We weren't allowed to. Uh, we were requested a couple of years ago to be able to put signage in the parks, recognizing those donations, and we were turned down for that. So for the past how many years, the chamber has bought all of the tulips. Last year, Lewis and Bloom offered to uh, fundraise for the tulips so that they could buy them. And my understanding is that all of those tulips, the over 24,000 tulips were purchased by Lewis and Bloom and they were planted by Lewis and Bloom. And uh, this was all discussed uh, last, last, uh, I want to say last spring before Lewis and Bloom did their fundraiser. Yep. It was part of their fundraising effort. It was identified as part of their fundraising effort. So I, this comes up somewhat of a surprise to me. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, next slide. Next slide. She might have, oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, the tennis uh, and basketball courts, line 5508. Um, there was a decrease here of about 60%. Um, and essentially, that was just a decrease in the purchase of supplies. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, the tennis courts are, are going to be resurfaced and that includes um, the basketball court and replacement of rims and nets and whatnot. So um, uh, that was not included in the supplies because it will be included with the resurfacing and um, maintenance there. Next slide. So our trees, 5509 is the line number. Um, we had an increase in of 38% for 52,500. Um, and some of this is attributed to, uh, we put in, we're putting in for an urban and community forest grant project for the midsection of West 4th Street between Burton and Ocean View. So it's basically that strip um, where the church is, Mariner's Retreat, um, and the, the Rollins property. Um, so we uh, had the urban forester come out and meet with Marty and myself last fall to review the proposal um, it includes the removal of nine trees that are failing um, or pose a safety risk or growing near power lines um, and then replanting those trees um, with the proper soil preparation and air spading if it's necessary for drainage. Um, so that is a, I think it's a $5,000 grant um, from the Urban Community Forest Project with 5,000 matching from the city. Um, and it also includes $10,000 that was um, donated to the city through um, the Mariner's Retreat. Um, so we're, we're focusing on the one side of the street with a couple of trees um, removed in front of the church. Um, the trees on that side of the street going further down West 4th, there were a few that posed a significant safety risk or were in very poor health, um, according to the urban forester that met with us. So we're kind of thinking about breaking that because it is a long strip of, of uh, land breaking that perhaps into two, two projects. Um, the other issue with not doing the, the full length of the one side where the church and Mariner's Retreat is, um, we just don't know what's going to happen with that piece of land um, and to plant trees um, and a year or two later have a development come in and take them out. Um, we're trying to avoid that. So we'll look at that at a, at a later date. So last year we did not um, do an urban and community forest grant project. So um, that's the, the majority of the increase for, for this coming year. And um, Janet, I'm looking to see where the grant is budgeted on page five. I don't see anything budgeted for these grants. Um, on page five? Yes. I don't think I have page five. Maybe Ellen Moraine can help us here. It's on page four. Page four. And it is account 104850300. Under donations? Yes. Yeah, so that shows a donation for uh, playground as well as the tree donation, I'm showing 11,000 has been received for trees. Okay, so four, eight, five, quadruple zero is where this is, okay. It's zero, three, zero, zero. Zero, three, zero, zero. Yes, parks and Rec. Oh yeah, donations, Parks and Rec for 17,000. And 17,000 includes sidewalks, you say? Ground on trees at 11,000. Playground is six and trees are 11. I'm being slow. So 11 out of the 17 is for 
the urban forestry grants? 11 is for the monies the city has received um, for trees, the donation. That was, that was a result of the Mariner's Retreat development. Then I'm, I'm sorry then, I'm still asking where the, the urban forestry grants are coming from. So we have not budgeted the five for the urban forestry grant. It doesn't sound like it's been received yet. Has yeah. it even been applied it, yet or yet? No, it's, it's uh, the deadline for submission of the request is March 5th. So we'll be putting that in next week. So ideally this will, I mean, assuming we get the grant, this number will come down five. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Janet, the uh, trees that have been recommended to be placed along for West 4th Street are trees that the urban forester has recommended. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And uh, we've okay. had to get, for submission of the grant, we've had to get three proposals, three different proposals, estimates for the project. Um, what we're hearing from the arborists is that there's one particular species um, that is very difficult to find. Um, but in Marty's experience in working with the uh, urban forest grant project, um, there is room for discussion um, with the understanding that sourcing trees can be, can be difficult for specific species. Um, so. Right. Hey, Janet, I just have one quick question. Okay. Sure. The increase of 25,689, will that be offset by the $10,000? Um, in other words, if we apply the $10,000 from the Mariners Retreat funding to that, and we get another 5,000 from the, um, uh, the, the Urban and Community Grant, is the total budget in terms of tax dollars that goes into this going to be 10589 or so? Um, I actually think that it will be less than that. OK, so so but the, my only point is that we're, we're netting out of the 25689 at least $10,000 if if we take the marriage. OK, thank you very much. That was my only question. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay, next slide. I think we're coming to the end. <laughs> uh, Zwanendale Park, we had a slight increase, 22%. Um, um, we're requesting 75, 25. Um, removal of the shrubs from in front of the Fisher Martin house. Um, and I, I think we're at a critical point with um, the growth of uh, the shrubs in front of that house. Um, and there has been some repairs that needed to be made or will be made to the house. Um, and we will be replanting um, and, and planting further away from the foundation and structure of the house so that it doesn't encroach on the, on the house. Um, so that was uh, one issue for the increase. The other is um, a purchase and installation of a lamp post. Um, there are several along the walkways through the park, um, and the request is to plant um, another, or to place another one in the herb garden, which is not well lit in, in the evening. Is this from Lou Pap? Yes. I have great respect for Lou. <laughs> And for them all. They're wonderful to work with, the commissioners. They really are. They're a great group. Um, so that's, that's, oh, I had Sango. Um, 5521 Sango extended. So that's the basically the library and the trailhead. Um, we had a slight increase of nearly 17%. Um, and that's um, for replacement of a tree by the children's patio, by the library, um, and then the Arbor Care Tree Maintenance Program. And, and just other, other maintenance and work. Yeah. Janet, it's Bonnie. Um, 
I don't, I don't have any problem with this, but it does, one thing that I think should be studied is it seems like the trees and the shrubs, or maybe they're just large shrubs, but that the vegetation on the side of the library facing the Rollins Center, mm -hmm. um, has just that that vegetation has really struggled and it has. I've noticed and we, that. we've replaced like there were some holly bushes there that I think have been replaced so my only thought is that somebody rather than keep keep on putting in things that are going to die there should be some a, a soil test or something over there to figure out what the problem is okay I think there's even something more basic than that assuming that they're going to go forward with the uh, replica of the, the train station Right. Some of those things will be lost. So before we do anything there, we ought to make sure that we're doing it in coordination with, uh, or in, in in light of what's going to be put there by Lewis, uh, by Art, by Lewis and Bloom, right. and, and right. that group. So a good point. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't know that that's going to affect the, the where the children's patio is. But your point is your point is well taken, Ted. Um, but uh, my, my only point is that everything that's planted there seems, not everything, but lots of what's planted over there seems to die. Yeah. So we need to figure right. out. I'm how. with you. Okay. But I do think we need to look at that because there's, because of the way that's positioned, uh, okay. that train, that airsat train station is going to eat up a lot of that space. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, agreed. And Janet, if I'm not mistaken, there have been several lines where you've attributed an increase to Arbor Care tree maintenance. Is that a, a, a broader program is it one contract to cover uh, an increased scope? Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Is it? Do we have a, a is it a contract we have with Arbor Care that we had before or is it the, a new contract? It was new, um, I believe last year. And are you proposing to expand its scope in FY22? Uh, no, it's the same. It's it's the same scope. I'm just um, no, it's the same. It's the same two parks. It's the same work. Yeah. But just a full, perhaps it's a for a full fiscal year. Right. Got it. Thank you. So I want to thank you for your time and um, have a good afternoon and a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank Appreciate you. you walking us through this. Obviously, lots of questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we can move then on to the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And that's on page 15. On that, on the parks and rec going forward, is that now we do have a beach commissioner. Mm. So they might, you know, I don't know where some of the stuff is now that they might take care of in the future, but that's just worth noting that next year, potentially right. even this year, we might think of putting some money in for a beach commissioner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. And if we appoint a beach commissioner at our next meeting on the 8th, uh, we'll have some, uh, some time to get some input perhaps from that before we go forward. And the, a, well, and yeah, it's a really good point, Andrew. And ditto. Remember, we, we went from 9 to 11 with the yeah. idea that that 11th commissioner might be for Great Marsh Park, so. But there, but is, 5K, a, there is 5K in for Great there Marsh. There is 5K, for, yeah. yeah. There's been, that's a holding number that's been there for a long time. Yeah, um, I, I suspect if, if, um, if a commissioner dedicated to that, um, to that park is named, that, there, that number may go up. Yep, I agree. With, with consultants, Bonnie. <laughs> no question about it. Always. Always. All right. So let's go on then to the Bike Pedestrian Committee. And that's uh, on page 15. So, so their budget is the same as it, it has been in the and, past. They, okay. They so the, I think um, we're okay there. They, they do the, the citywide map every year. So I think that they are planning to redo it this year. Okay. Um, is it yeah, they're pretty consistent. Well, there's bike ambassadors. Are, is that, I mean, I guess it's a discussion for them. It doesn't seem, I guess, likely to kind of get implemented this year then to really see any costs from that or? Um, there, there may be some minor costs, but I, I think if you look at their actual, I, I think we have enough in there that we could absorb, you know, if we get reflective vests with um, 
lettering on it or something, I think that there's sufficient funds to cover that. Yeah, that's a good point. And what about things like uh, bike racks for the pilot program at the beach access points? Um, that doesn't necessarily need to come through here. I mean, that, that can come out of a, um, there are a number of places we could, we could pay for that. Um, we okay. could also talk to, to legislators about CTF funds for that. I think CTF money is a good one. We could also take it from MSA money. Right. Well, also remember that uh, when we ex when we created the beach commissioner, we limited the jurisdiction of the beach commissioner, so if, if I remember correctly, to to the guarded beaches. So that That's wouldn't right. come out of this. It would be a different. Oh, but this is bike we, pads. We, 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 yeah. Oh, I yeah. I don't think that's bike pads. I, I think that's I a general think, city expense. I think that's just a city. You're right. You're, sorry, I was bad. I was on the last one. We spent a long time there, so you know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, this one was going to be so easy that I, I just I was still back on the other one. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of initiatives um, that have to do with the whole situation. I don't, I would suggest that they be grouped together rather than, you know, than um, dispersed among the commissioners so that we keep some, so we have some idea of what we're getting into on the, all of those things that came out of your committee, Rob, I think it, it makes sense to for that to be cabined. Well, I've just, uh, I'll take Anne-Marie's word for it that it, there's lots of pots of money that a bike rack can but, come out of. Let's not put it quite that broadly. There, there's, they're not, they're not a major expense. And I think between maintenance department with street supplies and stuff and MSA, and CTF, it's a, we'll, we'll be able to absorb it somewhere. Yeah, those things can be absorbed. I don't want you to think that there's a bunch of fluff here. No, I don't but think there, there is. In Bikes and Ped, there is a line item for maintenance and street, and it's been a couple yeah. thousand this year, it's a thousand. What, what is that for, though? So they stencil, they do the stencils oh, okay. um, over, over age 12, walk your bike. Um, they've, we've also used that for the silent policemen. Um, okay. So yeah. th those are that's where they would pay for that. Okay, I think then we could move on to Historic Preservation Architectural Review Commission. May I, Ted, before we do that, may I ask a real quick question sure. of Anne Marie, please? Uh, I think the, you described a uh, expense associated every year with the bike ped committee having a new map that they yeah. put together. Right. Is that uh, is that under advertising general line number 5280? Is that I, right? I do believe that's where they pay for that. Okay. And and there are other committees that have other costs that have similar costs. They do have printing costs, advertising costs as well. We've seen as we've worked through the budget. And my question is, do we have a relationship with a preferred printer? Or does each, at each time a committee creates a product, are we going to the street and going to different, different printers? So they use the same, I think they use Lewis printing. Am I right, right. Anna Lorraine? Uh, they use Con printing, C-A-N-N -N printing. Okay, and, and they, they don't make major changes every year. So I don't know if there would be an additional cost if we tried to look elsewhere. Um, I guess where I'm thinking is, is that if we, if I don't know, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. I apologize for not being prepared to ask this question, but if we spend, let's say $20,000 in different projects that are associated with printing, it might be very advantageous for us to shop to a $20,000 project treated as one rather than, you know, one, yeah. onesie twosies as we're doing it. The, the problem is like our printing, I'm trying to think of, for instance, we just got the, the signs printed that we use to post properties for subdivisions and, and those types of things. Right, right. That we we print when we run out. So we may only we may only get it once every three or four years. Um, you know, we did a big print job for the election. I think the timing of the different print jobs is such that it would hard it'd be hard to bundle them. Okay. 
We, I mean, Thank we can you. look for efficiencies where, where we can. Um, some things are just very infrequent. Sure, so, I understand that. Yeah, I understand. All right, I'd appreciate it if you would look into that, explore okay. those options. Thank you. We can do that. Okay, so we're ready to move then on uh, to the historic preservation, and I've asked. Uh, Anne Marie to help to bring uh, Barbara Warnelt into the conversation here. Barbara, you're with us if you'd unmute yourself. Okay. It's as though, it's as though your budget item is, is the same as what the amended budget was and what we adopted. So it looks like there's been no change. Um, no, there's not. Um, that 15,000 was started, I forget how many years ago so that we would be able to um, take only eight years to redo the survey instead of 28, which was the projection. <laughs> so, um, so what we're doing now is we've actually, this year we finished the last phase to resurvey both the, um, the local historic district and the National Register historic district. Um, we, we have two just to sort of address um, what was um, needed for the city. And what we're going to do uh, this coming year, I've, I've asked for a quote, which I haven't gotten yet, is we want to take these um, seven, six, six or seven years, I think this is the seventh. Um, and since each one was done as a separate package, we want to interface them so that you can very easily go online and read through them in a sequence that makes sense. And right now they're not, you know, sometimes they do one side of one street, but not the other side, just depending on how it was done. So I think that's really, really necessary. And at the same time, I've asked them to go back since a couple, there's been some major projects in some of the survey areas that were started, you know, five years ago, six years ago. Um, but it's very spotty. It's, it's, not, it's not like a whole street or anything. So I think they can, and they thought so too, they can very easily pick those up and update them at the same time. So when we're finished, we have a product that we feel is up to date and very usable, both for the public. Uh, we want it to be an easy access for the public and then also for the commissioners as we reference um, the photographs and the descriptions, which are are just so detailed. Now, all of this gets approved, has to be approved through the state historic office. Um, so it's not, it's not just us um, doing whatever, you know, it's a process and the state historic office operates under the guidelines from the national park who oversees their work. So I just want you to know, have confidence in this process and this package when it gets done. It's, um, it's really gonna be wonderful, so. Uh, Any questions? You. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I didn't understand most of what you just said. <laughs> and I apologize oh. uh, for that, uh, Barbara. But when you talked about the surveying being done, is it's this a is this a survey that is this uh, considered a, a consultant survey. fee? Tim, it's a resurvey. It's an update on the survey that we have. OK, and uh, is that uh, is that covered under line item 5266? Is that the consulting? I have no, I, I'm not look, I don't have that information to look at. That's what that is, that's Anne Marie and Eleanor. Okay. So, who is that? Is that something that is, is the city hiring a professionals to do this survey? Yes, the University of Delaware does, does this, Chad which is their historic architectural office. And it's at the graduate level. And there's uh, a couple of, um, you know, there, there's the director. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what her title is, um, but the, it's, and she, uh, and they are approved by the state's historic office to do this. And, and the state historic office has oversight as well. Um, right. and, this, and, and the, um, and the Park Service, who has oversight on the state, um, they actually recommend that um, CLGs and historic districts do a resurvey every five years. 
Well, we're still doing it. <laughs> and so, you know, by their standards, we're already behind. We need to start over. But, you know, I think for our purpose and for our town, I think this is, this is going to be very useful and we'll just need kind of occasional, you know, smaller updates as we move forward. Because we're now, we're now in, have a system and a, a, um, a reference material that fits the guidelines that everybody else is following. And I guess where I, uh, what caught my attention was when you described that, uh, I think you described it as a survey was done on a side of a street, one side of a street, but not the other side, or a part of a street, not the entire street. Is that problematic for your functionality as the H Park Committee? No, it won't be um, when we when we get them to mesh all the different years together. So it and, will but, be, okay. Yeah, but right, who's 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 who determines what the this uh, University of Delaware people what they survey? Who who's managing that? Well, it it was started. Um, well, Robin and the chair of H Park, you know, when it first started, they they determined based on they thought need. It was driven by the the activity that we were receiving, and I need. See. And so, and and the amount of streets and whether you could do both sides or not was all determined by cost. So you had to, you had to start and stop somewhere, and sometimes uh, it wasn't always the most convenient place. But none of these, the resurvey is still being held off. We're not using them yet because we, um, it was decided a while ago that we wanted to get the whole package done and then present it to mayor and council for final approval. I mean, I could send you some of the years, it's all digital. I could send you some of the years and you could see them and compare them to what we're using now. What we're using now, I think was done in 1992 mostly by volunteers, local exactly. yeah. volunteers. So it's, you know, it's, um, but I mean, it's, you know, I'd be happy to um, send one of the years to Anne Marie and she can forward them to you so you can better understand exactly what we're talking about, if you would like. Uh, I probably don't know what I'm asking for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna just send you one of the years. Uh, you know, okay. one of the, and, and then you can see, you know, I think I, well, I'm a visual person. So I just think anytime you can see what you're talking about, it's just a lot easier to understand. So I could send you, I could, I could have Robin, you know, uh, send me a sheet from the same street. And then I could send you a package of one of the, the years and you could compare the two. And it's, um, you know, it's like a jeans and a t-shirt compared to a suit. Right, and, and and being a lay person, I would be able to understand what I'm reading. Yeah. Is that correct? You, you would be excellent at it, Tim. So, <laughs> so, I let me try to um, take some of the technical complexity out of it a little bit because, you know, as I, as we're sitting here talking, I'm thinking, um, in various committees of of the city the word survey comes up and it's used in a lot of different ways. And right. um, Mr. Itzert will know that we have had lengthy discussions of surveys <laughs> in another committee recently. Um, this is different than, the, this is where they go out and they look at the historic properties and they document them. It's a documentation. It's not a meets and bounds survey. It's not a topo survey. So it's not, it, it's a documentation of the historic structure. So, That's much better. Yeah, better terminology. So it, 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 it just occurred to me that, you yeah, know, throwing around, you know, yes, terms yes, we should, we should, yeah, I guess. what they mean. So the documentation is in the form of probably photography. Is that correct? And they take, they take a photograph, they, um, they ask permission to go on the property and look at all the sides of the building, including any outbuildings because it's for the site, not just, the, not just the streetscape. And then they document 
the windows, the doors, the siding, the material, whether it's what period it might be, when it was constructed or a range of time when it was constructed, how much is what they call contributing, meaning there's still, um, if not the whole complete structure original to the construction, which there's very few of anymore, but right. they, it would identify what is and what had been added later. And they, um, and it's great, the great guideline for the commissioners when somebody, when we have an applicant that's requesting additional work. And um, we've had several um, structures, houses that have come in and they, I mean, they haven't hardly been touched or if they have been touched, maybe it wasn't a very good touch. And so <laughs> we're, some homeowners are very passionate about this and they, they uh, go back and they do a lot of research and they find out that the where the door is now was there was never a door there somebody put a door there and so but they then they uncover the siding and they find out well the original door was over here it was in the middle of the wall and so they're able to, to actually go back and do research and it, it also gives them um you know inf information about um material all the materials on the structure originally uh mm -hmm. versus what might be there now and it gives us um because both the homeowner and mm -hmm. the commissioners yeah. guidance on on because we we our guidelines are actually a re rehabilitation oh. guideline. Oh, they've got the phones set up in some kind what? of funky way where it just rings on everybody's phone and whoever's free. Yeah. What? What? That's not for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so anyway, so it provides good guidance for the homeowner and for the commissioners, uh, and. Um, you know, and that's, you know, our goal is we don't have a preservation ordinance, we have a rehabilitation ordinance. And the difference is recognizing the need for people who purchase houses or, you know, whether it's a, um, or whether it's a new purchase or whether it's an existing ownership, they, they have a need to make modifications to it that fit the lifestyle, their needs and lifestyle today, not sure. 100 years ago. So I think it's, I mean, I'm very excited about it. I think it's wonderful information, but I- Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah, and Tim, anytime you wanna talk about it or whatever, I'd be happy to talk to you. I appreciate that, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about their budget? Uh, just one question, Barbara, when you inventory, when you say you're gonna put these in a street order, are you going to inventory these houses in, in whatever document you finally put it together in by street address or by property uh, tax parcel? Uh, what I'm, I, I don't know, uh, but what I'm hoping to do is make it a very user friendly document. I mean, when I can't find a house um, and I'm pretty familiar with this, then, <clears throat> then I figure, <clears throat> excuse me, I figure somebody who's, who's new to the game is is gonna get quite frustrated. So I, I think it's gonna have like an index, you know, maybe it's a street end index. Um, maybe it would be, a, a, and, and what they have done is they've provided us a map of the whole historic area, historic districts, um, and they've got it color coded on which phase worked is for which area. Okay, so well, it, it could be some, it'll be some kind of a, both a visual and a written. That'll be very helpful, but I do think this the street address is probably what most people will find the most user friendly. Right. That's what the, yeah. that's that, that's what they use now. Barbara, one of the things that we might be able to do is work with Janelle and perhaps with Nicole Minnie at the University of Delaware, um, who, who has also helped us with GIS, and and maybe we could create an interactive map um, where people could search based on the map itself. Mm -hmm. I think that would be excellent. Yeah. yeah. I think you want to make whatever you come up with as user friendly as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. and, and more photos, the better. <laughs> well, that's actually determined by the state what information oh. is included. Oh. And, they, and, they're, and they put up some of the money on this too. Yeah. It's a grant. It's, they, it's a state it, grant. I know that Maybe the they, Historic Society has put up has put up some inventory of houses. How will this interface with that, or will it? 
I think it's going to be a separate okay. entity. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's. Um, I would imagine it's separate, but I just didn't know. It, what what does that what does that inventory look like compared to what you've got? Since I've never seen anything that's been generated. I have. That. I've never seen an LHS inventory. Okay. All right. Great. And I've been on the board until a yeah. year and two months ago. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Huh. Mm -hmm. Very welcome. Wow. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Barbara. You're very Thank welcome. Thank you, Barbara. Thank Keep you, up Barbara. the good work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think we've run through our boards, commissions, and committees for the day. Uh, we have other budget discussion, Anne Marie, that we need to consider at this point. Um, I don't think so. One of the things that um, popped into my head at, when it was brought up at last week's meeting, um, something was said, we'll get to that when we get to the operating budget. And when you look at the schedule set out, we don't have operating budget on there any, anywhere. So I don't know um, <laughs> I don't that know if we want details. You know, we, we've been at this for, for an, um, two and a half hours now. So I'm guessing we're, we're getting to the fatigue point. Yep, um, yep. I don't know if we want to do that before we get into capital projects next week, um, if, if we want to you know, maybe schedule another meeting. I, I, there's a lot of money in the operating budget, so I don't want to just say, here, it's the operating budget. Don't worry about it. But I think um, we need to do the operating budget before we do the capital projects. Okay, that's fine. I just- That way it. people will be, because they're gonna, there's an awful lot of things that are in close proximity there. Right. So capital okay. projects is scheduled for March 5th. Are you just going to change the agenda for that, Anne-Marie? What I will do is I will put on the agenda operating budget before we get to capital. Right. So it'll be, and, and, and then we still have the following week, the 12th, <clears throat> for, you know, rolling up the sleeves and, you know. Making decisions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Making the hard Good. choices. Yeah. Okay. All right, are there any other items and that then, we need? I'm sorry, one other question. What about public art? When should I, what should I, I I'll reach out to Cliff. Well, if he could possibly come next week, I think he should. Okay. Cliff, you know, we ought to try and get that done. Okay. It shouldn't okay. take too long, I don't think. Okay. okay. All right, if there's nothing else to bring forward in the open uh, in the open session, do we need to have an executive session today? Do you have anything ready for us? I don't think so. I mean, there, there's one small personal matter that I can probably email you and I, okay. I don't think it'll garner any major, you know, and, and then it, if you feel we need to have an executive session. And do we have an executive schedule, session scheduled for the next meeting too, March 5th? Yeah, we have it on all of They're the all agenda. And then we also have okay. our regular executive session on the 8th, so. But if on the 5th, we might be ready to talk about um, uh, an item that wasn't on today's executive session agenda, but strategy for litigation, that sort of thing. That will be on Monday the 8th for sure. Well, let's do it. We can probably move it up. Oh, we're only, so we're only moving it up by a Saturday, agenda. Sunday, if we move it from Friday to Monday. Or from Monday to Friday. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. okay. You, you so understand? Trevor, you'll, be, you'll, be, um, you'll be kind of brain fried after listening to Charles. That's true. We don't have to deal with it. I mean, we don't have to deal with it, but we might want to. I think it, I think that's so dynamic we can that we can um, we can sort of assess it. We can put it on the agenda as a possibility. I mean, the other that's option great. is to do. Um, something before so that we, you know. It, what are you thinking of when you say before? Sometime next week? Well, you don't have to, we can't post? If it's next week, it would have to be- um, Friday morning. Friday, right. I think we just run with what we got. Okay. I mean, you can't post something for next Wednesday or Thursday. It's too late. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. So next, Fri next Friday, we meet again at one, correct? We're right. not moving to a morning meeting, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. One of the things, and, and let me just ask you this 
um, because one, one of the discussions we had among staff is we, we're, we've scheduled the meetings in the afternoons because I think that's how it's always been done. Um, we did have a discussion among staff that perhaps we're all fresher if we do it in the morning um, rather than Friday afternoon when you've been beaten down for a week. So um, just looking ahead to next year, what, what are your thoughts? Because we can put a note in our, you know, binder, you know, in Marie right. last year's time. <laughs> I'm fresher in the morning too. <laughs> Morning meetings are fine. The only thing yeah. you have, you're going to have a conflict with there is assuming you're going to have a first Friday, you'll have scat steering committee uh, breakfast uh, conflict. So you may have to bounce it back and forth, not unlike what we did this year. Okay. But could you you could aim to have the majority of them in the morning? Sure. Yeah, that work. Can I go back to Rob's idea? I I think I think what you said you were going to do, Ted, but I'm not sure I. I just want to confirm it, is just to add to the executive session for next Friday and for then for the following Monday, the whole FOIA exception that goes to litigation. So we have the option if we need to, to discuss it both times. Did, right. is that what you're gonna, okay, I did follow you. Yeah, okay. You did That's, follow, yeah. But we will add, we'll amend the opposing that's for next Friday to allow that as an option. But, okay, thank you. And it's, and dynamic, the it's, it's so dynamic that we may not even we may not be ready to discuss anything next sure. time. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. If there's any is there anything else to bring forward? Hearing nothing, uh, thank you all very much. Uh, it's 3.45. Uh, it's been a productive afternoon here. How about a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, Bonnie, thank you very much. Safe travels coming home. Thank you. And, <clears throat> hope you uh, all in favor. Bye. 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 Have a great weekend, everyone. Everyone. Don't get yep. too wet. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Snow up there. <laughs>